Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Markets. My name is Chris Leyland and I'm Director of Investment Strategy here at True Potential. So if we start with equity markets, yesterday saw strong returns with both the UK and Europe up nearly 2% on the day. Europe's strong performance coincided with the release of the Zoo monthly survey of financial market experts showing an increase in investor confidence around the future of Germany's economy. The US finished up not as strong, but still in positive territory, around 0.4% stronger, with the S&P, the main US index, now ever closer to reaching an all-time high. Sticking with positive equity market moves, global equities were up overall just under 1%, and have now edged into positive territory so far this year for the first time since the pandemic triggered a global sell-off in equities in late February. As you can imagine, with a positive day within equity markets, gold actually fell. It fell around 4% on the back of its incredible performance so far this year, and that's due to a lower appetite for more perceived safe haven assets. In the same vein, government bonds also sold off with the yield on the 10-year US Treasury now at 0.65%. So that's its highest level for a month. If we look overnight and we look at Asia, China posted a small negative return with US President Donald Trump, saying that his relationship with the Chinese Premier Xi Jinping had soured since the COVID-19 crisis. Japan, however, actually posted a positive return, And that's as investors hope for further stimulus in the US. As I speak now, the FTSE's opened up positively, along with some European regions. I guess just thinking about the the news flow that we've seen over the past day, you know, what is the main piece of news that will be flashing up in newspapers and on websites? And that's really going to be the UK GDP figure. So the headlines will be that the UK has officially entered into recession. So what what does that mean? So it means that the UK GDP figure shrank by 20.4% in the second quarter. And as this was the second consecutive quarterly decline, this is why we are now officially in recession. But let's look a little bit more deeply into this. You know, clearly it is a, a very negative headline, but let's look more deeply at the numbers. So firstly, 70% of the decline actually comes from private consumption. And we know why this is. You know, we've been through a lockdown where people aren't consuming. But looking more in depth at the numbers, you know, are there any positives that we can take from that? And there are. In June, GDP actually rose by 8.7%, demonstrating the UK economy opening up. Looking at the sectors, June's data suggested that most had started to recover, with output decisively higher than April's lows. June's strong pickup in distribution output demonstrated the impact that relaxing lockdown restrictions can have. And as we know, with large parts of the hospitality sector having reopened at the start of July, we expect to see a strong increase in output in that month. Therefore, after what was a record collapse, For GDP in the UK in Q2, many economists believe that actually we could see the largest quarterly increase in history in Q3, albeit the level of output will remain well short of its pre-pandemic for some time yet. Okay, that's everything from me. I hope you enjoyed today's morning markets and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you very much.